Hi, I'm Johnny from Cinema 5D and I'm here with Patrick from Adobe. Patrick, how are you? I'm great, thank you, Johnny. How are you? Cinema 5D at NAB 2019 is brought to you by B&H, the professional source for all your video needs. CVP, the leading specialist in creative cine, video and photo solutions. Manfrotto, imagine more. Lawa, unique cinema and photography lenses. And Fujifilm, value from innovation. You introduced lately a new update to Adobe Premiere mostly, am I right? Or? All the video products really, but obviously Premiere is at the heart of that release. And last time I was complaining about stability and about uh, bugs and uh, what was there. And everything that sometimes I'm facing on everyday uh, editing life. So now actually there's a progress. Things are a bit more stable and better. What did you do in this version? So generally speaking, we always want to make sure that we strike a good balance between something new and then making sure that the product that's out there works on the broad variety of hardware there is. Uh, this particular release, actually we've done a couple of things. Next to investing in pure stability as is and as such, uh, we're also giving you better opportunity to see some of the things that are driving the product that are, that are required. So for example, we've seen a lot of support calls over the last couple of months, all related to GPU, driver version, potential version of the graphics acceleration system and so we decided to actually bring a display right in front of you that would tell you what you're on and if that is something that is supposed to work or where you should actually take care of updating your driver and, and so forth. So instead of taking you to a forum and finding out about yourself, we're just pushing that information. Just one of the examples where a better experience when you actually launch a new version of the product is just helping you to stay productive. Yeah, so, sorry, when you launch Premiere it will tell you about technical things within your computer. Yes, absolutely. Well, it will only do so if we de de detect something that's worth writing home about. Uh, but you can also find it if you want to get the system compatibility report, as it's now called. You can find that from the help menu. That's a new thing, this release. It's one of the many things we're doing. For performance, we're investing now heavily in everything that deals with multi-resolution and input. But most of us are still HD and output, right? Uh, but, well, um, we're probably recording 4K right now. And I'm not sure if you're distributing as such. But you have to do things like tracking on it. And so we've updated the mass tracking. It's faster at HD, roughly four times, but the real benefit comes with the higher resolution. So at 4K, it's actually in the category of 15 times faster, and at 8K, it's insanely faster compared to how it worked before. So we're updating the system to more modern workflows, if you will, where we're clearly acknowledging that things aren't quite the same as they were just three to five years ago. Actually, within this show, I tested the Sharp 8K prosumer camera edited the footage uh, on Premiere mm -hmm. and then tried to upload it to YouTube in 8K. It worked, it's there. Mm -hmm. But actually the hard part was the YouTube part, I have to say. With Adobe, uh, although it, it is H.264 uh, footage, um, it worked. I mean, we have, of course, we, we, have, we had to uh, lower the resolution um, while working. Mm -hmm but I was happy to see that at least it's working. If you're on a recent version, it's also probably true that you have a specific piece of hardware inside the system, which allows us to do hardware acceleration, specifically H.264 and HEVC. So there's a lot of investment in that category to make sure that on most platforms, you have a really slick experience with all these modern production environments. Interesting. Now, the second thing is, uh, that last time we talked about, is you listening to customers. Anything new about this? Are you still listening? Or actually you say, you know what, guys, you know better than us, leave us alone. We're actually not just listening, we're also taking action here. And we're really thankful for all the people who give feedback. UserVoice is a platform for all of our customers to give feedback. And you can see what others want, which is, I think, the most delightful piece about it. So you can actually see what's already on it and give your vote towards something that you also would like to see. From the things that have been requested since last NAB, this is when we introduced the system, uh, we knocked off some something like 70, 75-ish uh, requests of that platform. Uh, this release in particular, we have three of the top 20 requests in the product as we show it here. Uh, that's rulers and guides, and you might say, oh, that should have been obvious to you, but it wasn't, right? In our one-on-one -on -one conversations, that hasn't come up as something that's so utterly important. On user voice, we've clearly seen a lot of users want this. So it's in the product today. Even with a nice extension to After Effects, you can actually get the rulers and guides that, that you set in After Effects come across and bring that into Premiere. Uh, the second thing that we've done is to make sure that you get a warning on Warp Stabilizer when you render and it's not finished with its analysis. 
so far you would have been running into the problem that it might get into final output, you're now getting a warning. It's a simple change, but I get why it's so meaningful. It's an oversight on our end that it wasn't there in the first place, and this platform was great for getting that up to the top of the list and make it happen. Uh, the third thing is also something that has been a request for some time, but never gained traction, now we do it. Uh, in the track mixer, we now have an ability to just be flexible with the track mixing preset, so whatever you have in the stack, you can move it up or down, you can copy and paste, bring things across, much like an audition, quite frankly. Um, but yet again, it's something that is great for productivity, probably not shiny new, but so good to see these requests coming in and we're dealing with them as we go and we encourage users to keep coming with these requests or vote on things that are already on the platform. If I'm not mistaken, in our previous conversation, you said that twice a year you are releasing those type of updates. Mm -hmm. The next one will be when? So that's at least our usual cadence. Uh, predicting the future as usual is hard. We might change that cadence at any point in time, but we usually have a cadence of releasing an update at around NAB and then showing it at IBC, releasing it a little, sorry, a little later at around Max, our creativity conference that is about all the Adobe products. Any small hints about the future, the near future? Actually, the future is partially here. I can actually connect the Max conversation with something else available here, right here, right now in After Effects. We also have some really nice pieces of innovation. Content Aware Phil has been a most loved piece in Photoshop for some years. And we're now showing the same technology, but applicable to video in After Effects. So it's Content Aware Phil for video. That's a mouthful, but <laughs> you get the idea. It's about objects that shouldn't be in the shot, but they somehow got there like, you know, a tripod, um, boom mic, or there's a pole in the picture. Sometimes you might take out an object that just shouldn't be there, but you couldn't deal with it any other way, but fixing it in post, that's gotten a whole lot easier. And we've seen tremendous response already out on YouTube for people showing what they're doing with it. It's super playful and super fun to see what it does. Also, sometimes nice to see when it doesn't work. Obviously, it's not a magic bullet, but in so many cases, it gets the job done. Patrick, thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.